Hi everyone, Dr. David Culley here with Synergy Wellness in New York City. Now I'm wearing a mask. I don't normally wear one during videos, but my receptionist was exposed to COVID yesterday and we have Salvador here that we don't want to spread COVID if possible. It's the holidays, Christmas is coming up. So it's just courtesy. And then of course we have to call our patients from yesterday to let them know. And because again, we don't want to spread this amongst families during the holidays. That's the last thing we want to do. So what I'm doing here, what this video is about, it's not about COVID, it's not about masks. It's about cold laser therapy and Cox flexion distraction technique for lower back pain with disc degeneration and arthritis in the back. Many of us have that. Our discs naturally degenerate over time. They desiccate, they lose water, okay? And they're made up mostly of water. And then in the center, the nucleus papulsis. But again, it's 80 to 85% water in that disc. Okay, so we want to make sure that not only we aren't degenerating the discs and the way that you degenerate the spine is having a spine that's out of place or subluxated in one area, creating misalignments and imbalance in the spine and then creating abnormal wear and tear early or earlier than we would normally expect it. So I'm seeing arthritis in 40 year olds. Now, typically that 40 year old has scoliosis or has an old disc injury. And that's another thing, a disc herniation or a disc bulge can make some of that fluid in the disc leak out slowly and for some people quicker, especially for a herniation. So that can also help to degenerate a disc and cause more pain if it's pressing on a nerve. So with Salvador here, we've had a lot of success. He's got quite a bit of disc degeneration and some arthritis and normal for someone his age, but we were getting results. I would say we were getting about, you know, like about 30 percent results before we use the laser is, is that about yeah, right yes yes that's right yeah. yeah and you know he still had the inflammation in there and the arthritis and then also his insurance with medicare they limit a little bit of what we can do but we worked around that we got about 30 give or take percent results and then i sent him home with a laser for a week or two and that really changed things and where are you at now 70 80 90 percent improvement or 100 <laughs> I think it's about the 80, you know? 80, yeah. okay. So it got him from 30% to 80% in a week or two of laser. So what I'm doing here today is I'm going a little deeper with the laser. The lower the frequency, the deeper we can go with this laser. And the whole treatment takes about five, 10 minutes. I'm just showing you the end of the laser treatment so as not to bore you guys during this video. Cause that's the last thing I want is a boring video. And if you guys have any questions or comments below about back pain, about arthritis, about disc degeneration, feel free to comment comment below and we'll try to help you. By the way, we also did traction on him because he has had leg pain and he feels like his legs are heavy, which is stenosis that comes from stenosis. So we're gonna do a technique here that's really helpful for stenosis. It's called Cox, C-O-X, flexion distraction technique. And it is hands down the gold standard when you're dealing with arthritis or disc degeneration, disc herniations or spinal stenosis. So right here, I'm gonna adjust his lower back. And this technique is called Thompson technique where the table pops up. You, that's that noise you just hear there. The table popping up and then popping down. And it's a gentle technique and very effective for lower back and neck pain. Now we're gonna go into the flexion distraction technique. Now, this is definitely the gold standard. If you guys want more information, if you're an analytical guy or gal out there and you want more information on Cox technique, all that nitty gritty information, that information that's boring to most people, but not to me and not to you that decides to go on this website. So go on Cox Technique, C-O-X-T-E-C-H-N-I-C.com and there is a ton of research on this technique there and a lot of it's out of Indiana University, their medical school. A bunch of chiropractors and a bunch of orthopedists doing this research. This is a great technique. I've been using this technique for several years. I'm certified and there are several certified doctors all around the country and the world in this technique. Some countries more than others. US definitely probably has the most. I would say some of the other countries would be Europe and then for sure in the UK, Australia, 
I know the doctor goes there and does training sessions, certification sessions there. And a lot of foreigners come here to the States to train. So there's Cox Technique for the lower back and then separately for the neck, two different certifications. And this looks like a really gentle technique. And it is, right, Salvador? Yes, yes, yes. It's not painful, but you can certainly feel it working. You can feel the pull. And now what I'm gonna do is, you see this table goes up and down gently while I place my hand on his spine. Now we're gonna actually traction it out this way while we do that up and down motion. And that helps to not only space out the discs traction, which we did earlier on him before the heat, but it also helps to pump some fluid into the disc space, in the back of the disc space. And for those of you watching this, if you like, what kind of music do you play, Sal? I think well, the jazz, huh? All of it's jazz, all your music on iTunes? If you're a jazz fan, is it bossa nova or just regular jazz? Everything, okay, all types of jazz. We have a well-known musician here on the table and feel free to go check out his iTunes and you're probably on Spotify too, yeah? yeah. It's, what is it, Salvador Dom? Dom, D-O-M, Salvador. Beautiful jazz music. If you're a jazz fan, check it out. If you're not a jazz fan, check it out anyway because jazz is awesome. Okay, ready? I'm gonna adjust you again. Relax here. Okay, now we're gonna go back into the flexion distraction technique. Distraction is another word for traction for those of you that don't know that. And then we have mechanical traction and then just regular traction. This table does mechanical traction but if you were to hang over the edge of a teeter-totter or one of those traction tables, that's gonna be just a manual traction versus a computerized traction, which comes in about 25% and then extends out more, comes in another 25% and it's all computerized. Okay, now what I wanna do is check your leg lift. So keep your legs straight, raise one leg as high as you can. Okay, and down, and the other one. Okay. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but his left leg went up way higher than his right one, probably about five inches. So hopefully you guys saw that. We're gonna take the right leg, the difficult one, cross it over ankle over ankle. And if you could, I'm gonna have you slide down just a little bit for me. Go ahead and slide down for me, Dom. Just a teeny bit, there we go. So what that means is his sacrum is rotated. The sacrum is the bone, triangle bone, that sits in between our pelvis. And it's held by four ligaments on each side to the pelvis, so it kind of floats in there. So we're gonna adjust that rotation. His sacrum is rotated counterclockwise. Okay. Now I know there's gonna be people commenting why is he wearing a mask and all sorts of mask nonsense? Give it up. My receptionist had COVID. That's why I'm wearing the mask. You'll get over it. You can hear my voice and you can watch me doing what I'm doing. So it's all good, folks. Okay? Don't get your, uh, don't get all upset. We get, we've had people get upset when I wear a mask on, on past videos, which I never could understand that. It's all about patient safety. Not about myself, about patient safety. I'm personally not too worried about COVID. Relax yourself here. Now raise them up one at a time. Okay, that went up a little higher. This one's still going up higher. Okay, so cross this leg over here. Uncross them again and try that one more time for me. Okay. And the other one. That's much better. Much better. Okay, turn over on your back. So the last thing we want to check for back pain. Now, this is important. If any of you have been to a chiropractor for back pain and or sciatica, Okay, and your doctor hasn't done this with you face up, you may wanna go see another chiropractor. This is called your psoas muscle, P-S-O-A-S, or also called your ilio psoas muscle. Okay, and this is a huge muscle connected to the lumbar spine and then into the hip. It's a hip flexor, and it's directly connected to the lateral aspect of the discs. So it's gotta be checked 
for low back pain. It's like making pizza without putting the cheese on it. If you don't, as a chiropractor or a physical therapist, check the psoas muscle with any back pain case. And I already know his is tight. Hands up. Don't think I'm a magician. I know for a couple reasons. One, I've been treating him for a while. I know his body. Number two, I can tell by sacrum in the pelvis from looking at him face down. This is gonna be really sensitive, right, Sal? Yeah, it is. Okay, now I know you were concerned. Here, because of uh, our receptionist recently coming down with COVID, we wanna be safe rather than sorry. It's the holidays, we don't need to cause problems amongst other families and people. Good, so this psoas muscle is halfway between the umbilicus your belly button, and your ASIS, which is that bone that sticks out in the front, your front, the front of your hip up there, all the way up at the top on the pelvis, it sticks out. It's called the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine. So if you wanna Google it just to make sure you got the right spot. It's hard to do yourself like this. There are other stretches for psoas muscle. In fact, I'm gonna show you guys how to do some psoas stretches. At the end of this video, we're gonna put a few psoas stretches at the end of this video. So stay tuned and you'll get a couple of psoas stretches at the end here, okay? We're almost done, Sal, how you doing? Okay. Okay, so now let's see your hands up in the air, leg flat. So his arms, when I checked them at first, his right arm was much shorter. And don't ask what that has to do with the psoas. It's really long and complicated to explain, but his arms are now even, he's good there. Relax your arms and relax your neck. Is your neck bothering you at all? A little bit. A little bit? Little bit more, yeah. Okay. And relax your neck here. Let it go. Got any more range of motion there for me? Just that? Okay. Okay. Come on up. And folks, if you want to listen to his music live, where can they find you? The Riverhead, right? No, I'll go to the River Cafe. The River Cafe. The River Cafe, sorry, in Brooklyn, New York. Thanks for tubing in, and see you soon. Thank you guys so much. If you got anything from this video, or even if you just like this view of the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building, give me a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Appreciate you guys.